Hi, welcome to International Hawaii on Think Tech, where we showcase local import and export companies and the trade industry. I'm your host, Cindy Matsuki with the Foreign Trade Zone. And today we're chatting with Jun Kurora of Off-Road Express. Hi, Jun. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi. Hi. Thank you very much for having me today. <laughs> I know you're really busy, but I, so I'm excited to have you on the show. Could you briefly explain what Off-Road Express is? Okay, Off-Road Express is uh, the agent of uh, Sagawa Express from Japan. Mm -hmm. That's the main part of the business. Uh, we do uh, sh uh, shipping overseas uh, to and from Japan. And we also do uh, some um, uh, local deliveries also. Oh, like you mean inter island or just? Uh, within Oahu. Oh, okay. Yeah, like for, yeah, for, for, yeah, for local delivery, yes. Uh -huh. Got it. When did um, Off Road Express start? Off Road Express started late 90s, yeah. um, uh, being uh, as an agent of Asagawa Express Japan. Uh, we first time, I mean, uh, when we start off Offroad Express, mm -hmm. we start from um, uh, an unaccompanied baggage for Japanese tourists. So oh, interesting. Yeah, in the 90s, uh, Japanese had, you know, they, they are so exciting to come here in Hawaii <laughs> and they buy, they go ABC, you know, they buy everything they want mm -hmm. and they take everything back to the room and they realize they can't take everything can't carry home. It back. <laughs> so they call, you know, Off-Road Express, you know, they want to ship it over instead of, uh, mm. you know, they carry everything home. Yeah, they, oh, we wow. start from there, yeah. Oh, huh. and what were you doing before that? Like, how did you know that was a need? Oh, okay. Um, I used to work for another company called Yamato Transport. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I, I learned from them. And, um, uh, yeah, they, they were doing some uh, company baggage also. So yeah, we we uh, we just uh, copy <laughs> the ser you know same kind of service, but you know it's a better rate. Yeah. Oh, nice. And then from there, did Sagawa approach you to be their representative? Oh yes. Uh, okay. When I was working for Yamato Transport, mm -hmm. one manager from Sagawa approached me, uh, and you know they want to uh, me to pick up. Sagawa cargo, not Yamato cargo. So, you know, I, <laughs> I, I just made that, you know, new, new challenge. Oh, okay. Were they doing the same thing or were they just doing regular like merchandise shipping? Uh, yeah, we do now uh, regular kind mm -hmm. of, you know, it's uh, e-commerce uh, shipping, like, uh, you know, oh, store cool. to uh, store to uh, like a uh, you know, consumer in the Japan. Customer. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, we do those services also. Oh, is it mostly export or do you do import too? Uh, no, mostly export. Oh, yeah, interesting. And then you do ocean and air freight. Yes, we do both ocean and air freight. Yes. And then the ocean freight goes direct to Japan, and does it come directly back? Uh, it's, yeah, it has a route right now. Uh, yeah, we go back and forth, you know, direct to Japan. Uh, oh. Yokohama. Oh. Yeah, Yokohama port. Okay. And who is your target customer? Like who benefits the most from using Off-Road Express? Uh, right now, I, because, you know, there's no tourists in Waikiki. Mm -hmm. So right now, you know, we, we are doing uh, some of uh, the e-commerce business. That's, that's mm -hmm. the main thing. Yes. Got it. So you're supporting like Hawaii businesses that have e-commerce mm -hmm. and Japanese customers. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh. So they we can go to their store or maybe their warehouse, mm -hmm. uh, do do pick up and you know just consolidate everything, and you know give it to uh, airline, so that you know they can they can do another consolidation too. Oh, interesting, mm -hmm. interesting. And do you have like is it contract for business or is it just pick up by pick up? Like uh, no, we have you? to we have to uh, contract a shipper. Uh, you know, we have our first, uh, okay, before we do business with any company, we mm -hmm. have to make the company as a known shipper uh, because we can't take anybody's cargo onto uh, aircraft uh, mm -hmm. by, you know, the, it's regulated by a TSA. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have to uh, register a shipper first to the TSA system. Then mm -hmm. uh, we can, we can, you know, uh, we can forward 
uh, we can you know pick up and we, we can ship over. Especially from Hawaii, uh, there is no cargo airplane. So the TSA regulation is kind of uh, strict. Oh, because you're going. Yeah, we 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 only have a, you know, yeah yeah commercial passenger air flight. Yeah, that's why you know TSA regulation is very uh, tough in Hawaii. Oh, so what does that mean? They're they're very strict on what you are okay, transporting. Okay, say you know if Cindy, you want to ship a cargo. I mean, if you you want to ship us packages to your friend in Japan, mm -hmm. I I can't go your place to pick up because oh. you are count as an unknown shipper. Yeah, okay. you know we. Yeah, we can't pick up from no, uh, anybody, but uh, you know we only can pick up from a non shipper site. So like a uh, uh, like ABC store, mm -hmm. we can pick up from them. They are a uh, non shipper. Okay, but, and is that uh, just yeah, we, paperwork to become a non? -shipper? Yeah, yeah, we, we yeah we we just process that paperwork, and mm -hmm. I think a TSA, uh, TSA, you know, cross check if this is this company or this person is existing really, and you know. I, I don't think they do any kind of background check, but oh. uh, uh, so just, it has to be we it has to be matched with the uh, uh, other record like uh, you know DCCA you know record mm, keeping your check so. records and mm -hmm. uh, so they just want to make sure that you are a legitimate company. Right, right, right. Got it, got it. And then you don't ship to any other companies. I mean, any other countries. Sorry, just Japan. Uh, we yeah uh, right now we only ship to Japan. Yes. Okay. Have you had any um, problems with transporting something with your customers or like any crazy horror stories about <laughs> shipping gone wrong? No, um, we are steady. I mean, we, yeah, we are good. <laughs> we are good. <laughs> Got it. No, that's good. I mean, it's good if you don't have any problems. I mean, that means your system works and then your customer right has yeah, they were happy. lined up yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay good the the uh, the unique product we ship is a surfboard oh yeah, yeah. um it's a big and bulky mm -hmm. and it's so fragile so mm -hmm. i think uh, the surfboard is one of uh, uh the it's it's good good uh market but uh, it's also very hard market Mm -hmm. we have you know the packing packing technique we have we have to i think we spend a lot of times you know to to learn uh, from the damages mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. yeah we we pay a lot and but in, right now yeah we are uh the damage ratio is so low oh good mm -hmm. and is that one of the biggest um products you're shipping now yeah i think so yeah surfboard is one of the biggest market i mean biggest product mm -hmm. we ship to japan we, I think we ship maybe close to 150 surfboards to Japan every month. Wow. Yeah. When uh, it was busy uh, back then, you know, before COVID, mm -hmm. some, yeah, we, we ship more. But mm -hmm. right now, uh, because, you know, they, the Japanese tourists don't come here to buy it. We just do, you know, uh, the online orders mm -hmm. to the surf shop. So, yeah, it, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. still, yeah, it's a, it's a big market. Yeah, I would think especially after the Olympics this year with the surfing. Yeah, the, the surfboard in Japan is uh, like a maybe double expensive than, you know, what we can get it here. Oh, wow. So pe yeah, people want to spend freight and maybe duty tax, but yet and still, it's, still... It's, cheap, it's cheaper. Wow. But so there are companies that shape and sell surfboards in Japan. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah they do. They do. Yeah. Oh, they yeah. Have. yeah. Huh. Interesting. And then, like, what other kinds of products do you ship from Hawaii? Like food products, uh, snack products, or we I'm do curious. ship some some uh, the food supplements. Oh, and yeah, vitamins are those are uh, kind of popular, and also what else we ship? Uh, some uh, uh, cosmetics. Oh, yeah, those those kind of things, yeah. So, huh. so you know, other than surfboard, it comes to small packages. <laughs> yeah. So that must be easier. <laughs> yeah, easier. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, has the pandemic affected your business? I mean, it sounds like it slowed down a little bit. Yeah, it's uh, slowed down. Yes. Um, 
after uh, before pandemic we were concentrating on the uh, business uh, here in japan you know the, the shipping business but uh, after like i said in the beginning uh, mm -hmm. we do some local deliveries yeah mm -hmm. that's not affecting by you know COVID. Mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. wow but it's interesting that there's still a lot of um e-commerce going on between hawaii and japan mm -hmm. yeah they do they do yes okay but not so much people that want to ship from japan to hawaii uh from japan to hawaii there yeah maybe you know hawaii is too uh we only have certain amount of people here you know mm -hmm. there is no not not enough order to make it oh. you know continuous business oh, so right. yeah I think we need more customer to make it uh, like a you know, regular basis shipment. You know, well, when we have a, a one box once a month like that, you know, we can't get the rate from the airline. You know, mm. that's going to be too expensive. So when we have a, a, a small amount of a, a business from Japan to here, mm -hmm. uh, my office in Japan just use like a, a FedEx account or maybe DHL mm. account. Yeah, just to ship over. Because mm. they they can't consolidate they they don't have enough cargo to consolidate to make a big shipment. Huh. Yeah. Interesting because I feel like there's so much product from Japan that does come to Hawaii. Yeah, especially especially food. <laughs> yeah. We want to get it here, but uh, the yeah. U.S. customs they have so many small uh, uh, regulations like. Uh, when you fly to Japan, you you try to get like ramen or mm -hmm. maybe some uh, you know chips from Japan, but mm -hmm. you know uh, sometimes you the, those uh, things got confiscated by the customs when you get arrived here because of the ingredients. Mm. So when you try to import something, you you really have to know what the ingredients are. So like a oh. Don Quixote, you know, uh, those you know supermarkets, you know, when they have a uh, Japanese snacks, the Japanese mm -hmm. food, mm -hmm. they I think they study a lot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I remember. I think you couldn't bring meat products back. It's Is not right? it, even a meat. Yeah, you, you cannot bring a meat product or maybe like meat flavor or meat, uh, like essence. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So it's very strict when on the ingredients when you said beef or pork chicken mm -hmm. you know you can't mm -hmm. you can't uh, bring it in and the <laughs> customers they, they know the chinese character <laughs> <laughs> they, I, we, we cannot you know long time ago we can't cheat maybe <laughs> but now now you know they know how to you know how to read the chinese character also so yeah wow. they are very strict about it huh interesting and so how did you how did you shift um your business from doing like how did you market your business to stay in business during the pandemic when there was no tourists uh, and there's still no tourists the uh, there the the tourist market is down but uh, mm -hmm. i think some some uh, company wants to stay in business even within the pandemic so mm -hmm. we we went out after them to you know just to support their mm -hmm. activity that's that's mm -hmm. how we uh right now we are uh we like uh we okay we, our company is like a member with six but uh, still one member is stay home mm. yeah so we oh. cut down you know some hours you know mm -hmm. at the beginning we cut down to like a, maybe two just working wow. in, the office, in, in, in the beginning of the COVID, but mm -hmm. it's getting better and better Mm -hmm. So now only wants still, but what only wants to uh, stay home? Yet. Mm. Well, that's good. That's good. Um, we are gonna take a quick break. This is International Hawaii on Think Tech Hawaii, and my guest today is Jim Kubota of Off Road Express, and we will be right. Aloha, my name is Mark Schlav, 
I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. My program comes on every other Monday, one o'clock, and we talk about a lot of different subjects, all of them law related in some way, either life or practice. And I try to have a diversity of guests that can talk about different topics of interest. So please join us. Think Tech Hawaii, Law Across the Sea program, every other Monday, one o'clock in the afternoon. Aloha. Hi, welcome back to International Hawaii on Think Tech. Today, my guest is Jun Kuroda with Offroad Express, and we are talking about their service to Hawaii, to Japan, from Hawaii and back. <laughs> So I was going to ask, um, and how do what is the benefit of people using Offroad Express versus just going with FedEx or another UPS yeah. Other company? Yeah. Okay, uh, because we have a regular shipments, uh, the regular consolidations, mm -hmm. uh, so we can get better rate, better air rate, and the custom currency in Japan we do as a manifest custom currency, so. Uh, the rate we have uh, compared to FedEx or UPS is much, much cheaper. Oh. And uh, when we said Offroad Express, maybe they don't know about it, but when we said mm. Sagawa, mm. which is, uh, which is you know, uh, what we are agent for, mm -hmm. the Sagawa Express, you know, the Japanese people, 100% Japanese people know uh, Sagawa Express. Sagawa Express is one of our three major transportation companies in Japan, just like a oh, wow. UP, UPS or FedEx in Japan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, oh, okay. um, yeah, when we call ourselves as a Sagawa, then mm -hmm. people know what we do. Mm. And you specialize more in air or both, depending? Uh, more, more, more in the air. More air. air. Air cargo, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I was going to ask, like, are there ocean carriers that you use that would go direct from Hawaii to Japan or back? Yes, uh, we do use uh, ONE. Mm -hmm. um, there are uh, like uh, used to be like a NYK uh, K mm -hmm. line, but uh, they make the you know big uh, mm, like ship line. Yeah, they they mm -hmm. combine everything together, and yeah, that's uh, we we use ONE for the uh, big household move. Oh. Yeah, when they have like a, a one house, a lot of furniture, a lot of boxes, then we uh, we use a ONE container to ship oh. over. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I think they're one of the few, right, that do direct to Hawaii. I think they're they are, are the, they the only, only. I think so. They are the only ship line. Mm. So, um, but from here to Japan, the rate is not too bad. But oh, from yeah? Japan to Japan to here. I heard it's uh, like a maybe triple times ex more expensive than you know going backwards. So <laughs> why yeah. is that? I don't know. Maybe <laughs> it's uh, demands is higher, much higher. Huh. So uh, from Japan to Hawaii, uh, say one container costs like ten thousand uh, dollars. From here to Japan, it mm -hmm. first it's like maybe three thousand instead of wow. 10,000, so it's a very big difference. It's strange, you know, it's same route, same yeah. distance, but yeah. you know, they have different rates. Mm. Or it's probably cheaper, maybe because they go to Long Beach, right? Or California, and then maybe, back maybe. to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And then that might be cheaper. Mm. Do you see any trends in transportation and shipping? Like as far as, are we, I've, I've read articles about how there's been a lot more traffic with shipping and containers, but then I've heard that there's also a lot of backup because of labor issues or mm, port size. Yes, I like think when, uh, what have you seen? every every all the all the freight charges are coming more expensive after the COVID. Mm -hmm. I heard that's because, like you said, it's a more uh, less labor. Um, yeah, less the locations to open you know, on the operations. 
Mm. Yeah, and you it, think it's jumping up the price, yes. And demand has gone mm -hmm. up too? Yeah, demand is going up too. I think people cannot, you know, especially to Hawaii, people cannot move, you know, because uh, we are on the island. Mm -hmm. So uh, everything, has demands, yeah, everything has to be come in. Mm. That's true. But I'm glad, I'm glad Japan still wants to purchase things from Hawaii. Yes, that's they, how it, they, that's they how love it. Hawaii. <laughs> that's always a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of logistical challenges is Japan facing that you know of, that you could share with us? Uh, Japan facing? Mm -hmm. Like, like uh, what, what do you mean by challenge? Um, like, I know they're still having challenges with COVID, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then what about, um, how are they managing with their import export, like their ports and their shipping? Is oh, I think been... it, everything is same as the US, you know, they, they have short staff. Oh. Um, yeah, it's, it's exactly the same. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's too bad. Yeah, COVID, COVID changed everything, I think. Mm. Mm. But uh, Japan is, their vaccination ratio is, I think, getting better and better. So I hope they're coming back to normal soon. I hope so too. <laughs> I really hope so. Um, what advice would you give to someone who's starting up their business? Like any kind of business, either in trade or... <laughs> I, if I'm, if I try to open up another business, yeah. Honestly, I won't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Too hard. <laughs> you have to work hardest, and mm. the return. Yeah, sometimes return is not too great. Mm. So yeah, but uh, it's always fun to work hard. So mm. yeah, yeah. Uh, when if. Uh, people like likes to work hard uh, you know open up with your own business is good challenge mm. and you, <laughs> if, you know you can keep yourself busy all the time so yeah i would think it's yeah. rewarding i mean if you like what you're doing right yeah i like <laughs> <laughs> but i won't do it again <laughs> got it is there anything like you would um any lessons learned that you would advise somebody if they're starting their own business or just be prepared to work hard <laughs> uh yeah prepare to work hard and <laughs> you know just be honest to the customer mm. you know yeah when uh uh try to uh not not to rip off but uh you know make give a lie to the customer Mm -hmm. if, uh, you know small or big or you know the bad or good uh, the lie won't last so uh, mm -hmm. just be just be honest to the customer and you know uh, also to the team members or maybe some vendors. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, you don't you don't have to hide anything. Mm -hmm. And you know, people people can understand the situation. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, and then you lose people, right? If they find out eventually. Right. Yeah. Eventually. Yeah. <laughs> last um, last random question. Mm -hmm. What has been your pandemic pastime activity? Have you been doing anything specifically, or have you just been so busy with work? <laughs> I, I don't get. I don't get the question. One, one more time, please. No, like um, during the pandemic, when people have been staying home, some people have mm -hmm. been gardening, some people have been. Oh my! Watching my movies. my private life, you mean? Yeah. What ah, you been okay. doing? <laughs> I found. The hiking habit, uh, you know, oh, on the nice. weekends, I I go to trail. Mm. Yeah, um, I like a pillbox trail. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, those things. You know, I knew there is some nice uh, the hiking courses, mm -hmm. but uh, I never tried before. But when I have time uh, mm -hmm. now, I I can try. It's a good, good exercise, and the view I saw it was uh, very nice. Good, good. Yeah. Has it been less crowded? I feel like some some of the hikes have been getting more crowded. Yeah, I, I think so. I think a lot of people find out that the hiking is good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like it. I like the hiking, yes. 
Me too. That's awesome. Thank you so much. We're going to leave it here. Okay. We've been watching International Hawaiian Think Tech, and we've been chatting with Jun Kuroda of Offroad Express. Thank you so much for sharing your time with me and your insights, Jun. Arigato gozaimasu. Arigato <laughs> Thank you. Thank you to our viewers for tuning in. I'm Cindy Matsuki. We'll be back in two weeks with another edition of International Hawaii, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.